Welcome back to another Abs Daily News with your hockey coach, your old coach, Frenchie. Today, episode number 58, we consider to give you continents about the NHL Draft 2022 and Montreal Thursday, July 7th. So don't go nowhere. Here we go, guys. Episode 58. We're going to resume the press conference from the Montreal Canadian manager, can use with Vincent Le Cavalier. We're going to talk about what the Montreal do need for the next NHL draft 2022. I'm going to talk about we're going to get action or not action, trade or no trade, moved up, moved down. Which player are ready to play in NHL for the upcoming season? And finally, which player are born in Quebec? are going to be select NHL Draft 2022. So let's dive in, guys, right away here. Yes, yesterday, Monday, the manager, Ken Hughes, with Vincent Lecavelli, met the media. Every year at the NHL Draft, manager of each team meet the media the day prior NHL Draft. This year, the Montreal Canadian, with a new management, they decide to meet the media a couple of days prior of NHL. What they talk about, Yesterday, guys, first of all, they are down at three players for their first selection. It's going to be Wright, Slavkovsky, and Lucan Cooley. Supposed to be one of the three is going to be pick number one overall NHL draft 2022. They are going to meet all the scouts. They are in town right now and start Monday night and all day Tuesday all together and hear from them what they're thinking about each player's and go deeper about the NHL draft, so prospects. So this is going to happening for them for the next 36 to 48 hours. They talk about the process of their selections on the press conference. Who is involved? What kind of meeting do you do with the players? And what kind of characteristic or character they're looking for for the players? And who, what are looking for? So when I said what I'm looking for is, what kind of players are they looking for? Is it a guy with speed, physicality, hockey sense, haiku, how he can deal with the pressure to live in Montreal, he play for the Montreal Canadiens? It's they all what they explained during the press conference yesterday. Then they talk about the projection for each pick, who they can become in the next five years. So they said it's not... We don't want to pick the best player today at 18 years old, but we try to find a way or analytically to find the player, what they look like in five years, at 24 years old, example. So they talk about their process to reach that kind of projection for their picks. Talk about they are willing to move up or move down. They are willing to trade their first pick if it's get better their team with that Trait. And they're definitely looking for a move up at some point during the NHL draft. And then finally, they talk about the role about Vincent Le Cavalier. They don't explain, but he talks to us what he does for the Montreal Canadian, more how he's involved about the NHL draft process. Now, they give some update about the assistant coach. They are still looking for an assistant coach as a defenseman right now. He said a lot of part of this is involved Martin Saint Louis, and he keep up some update. And we don't know or we don't have any that that line went out to pick up the assistant coach. Talk about the Jeff Petrie scenario. Can he can be trade or not? He said the biggest problem Petrie. It's not about the the players. It's all about the family situation, about the COVID-19, the vaccination, no vaccination. He said, look, they have four kids. The wife need help. They, she asked her mother to join. and But because she cannot travel to Montreal because she has no vaccination and she's a bit older, that complicated the situation for Petri family to live in Canada. Talk about an update about Carey Price. He said, look, nothing changed. Same thing. He did not get a second surgery. It's on the waiting now to see if he can play or not. There's something we want to know more, a little bit more in August. So here's my thinking about the, the conference yesterday, guys. I did not learn a lot. When I said this, it's like 
wow, it was not a, a big announcement from the team for what we know already. So for me, I did not learn a lot from this press conference. I learned a little bit more about the Le Cavalier specific role inside that team. He's really involved on in the selection of the picks by talking with different players like Shane Wright. He asked a lot of questions to him. And he showed, because he's been there as a number one overall pick with a Tampa Bay Lightning, he gives his experience with Jacques Demers with a Tampa Bay Lightning. And he talked about this on a press conference. And then he said, I watched a lot of video about Sven players and I gave my recommendation can use and the staff for the Montreal Canadian. So it was pretty nice to hear more about Vincent Le Cavalier. My take about this also is about they open up to trade up or drive, trade down. It was a little bit surprised for me. They are willing to trade their first pick if the deal is good to get Montreal Canadian better. One thing I'm really impressed from the new management, they do their homework. They really go deep. So they not only add, talk with the players, they talk with the uh, ex-coaches, they talk about their ex-teammate, they talk about their teammate, they talk about their coach, talk about their family members, they talk about their friends. They really no want to know who they are. And this, for me, they go deep on their homework. Really important for them, their selection is the character of the players. Can the players accept that kind of pressure and Montreal to become number one overall pick and play for the Montreal Canadiens? Here what I'm thinking about the abs need. For what I heard from Martin St. Louis, Ken Hughes, Jeff Gordon, since they get hired by the Montreal Canadian, what I know is or what I heard a lot. They need size at front position on, on their roster. They need speed. That's really important for them. They need IQ and hockey sense, creativity, and of course, the mindset of the player, the character of the player is really important for them. Now, the position really they need to get more picks, prospect, is a right defenseman, center, and forward top nine. We know they have Sean Farrell, Joshua Rua, Raleigh, Alonen, Mazak, but I don't see deeper, great player, can great play full time as a top six. So I think for me, a forward, top six, right defenseman, and a goalie are the three positions they should focus in. Now, of course, when they pick, they try to get the best player available. At the first pick they got, I still believe they're going to look in between Shane Wright, Stokowski, and Cooley. At 26 pick, all depends who is going to be available. But if Nathan Gaucher is available and Jimmy Snagarad, both center are available. I think that's what they should target in at 26. At 33, I would try to look more as a defenseman, right defenseman. I don't know if Tristan Luno will be available. I don't know if Lane Hudson is going to be available. I don't know if Bishop is going to be available. But that was the three names. If they are open up at that 33, I was targeting when they select at the end of the third second round pick and at the beginning on the third round here the players i'm looking for lads the german kaplan a great 6-3 right winger for the team usa yeni neman another great big guy noah R ryan uh, played for qm last year another great big guy the goaltender tyler Brenton play on the WHL. Uh, plus, guys, Red Sheffer. Remember this name. He was late, 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 about 100 overall pick. He's getting riser and riser in the selection NHL draft for many scouts now. I'd not be surprised he's open up about 60. It could be a little bit lower. So, Sheffer, check his name. Big Bisted is a big center for Sweden. That's really interesting if he would be available. I think he would be out earlier. The defenseman, uh, Lundwitzki, great defenseman. I think could be one of the three selections for Montreal. Maverick Lamoureux for Drummondville, defenseman 6'7". Can he be available at 62? I'm not sure. But if he is, uh, I would definitely looking for him if I was a Montreal Canadian. This, of course, can change with time. 
But I just give you a couple more names. You can learn more about those. Speak for the Montreal Canadian. Let's move on to the NHL draft. Action or not action, coach? What we heard for the last couple of weeks, and that's what I'm looking for for this draft. The Montreal said that yesterday, but New Jersey, Ottawa, Philadelphia said during the last couple of weeks, they are open up to trade their pick first round. New Jersey number second, the Philadelphia number five, Ottawa on number seven. Possible Columbus could be add on this or willing to trade their pick. Can they do this? Here's my problem on this one. Can they move up or move down? Because there are no separation on the top 10. And because they will have to pay an asset or a team have to give an asset to them to go down. I don't see how this is going happening. Between guys, Shane Wright, to go all the way to Marco Casper or Jerechek or Matthew Savoie. They have not much separation, all of them. So for me, the top 10 are very close. And to move them up from 9 to 5 or 12 to 8 or move, I don't see why they will spend an asset to do that because it's really similar, those players, in my eyes. And the same way later in the draft, at least someone slipped. Otherwise, I don't see why a team is going to jump from 26 to 22 because they are all similar to players. So for me, I don't see that. My thinking is about this guy. I don't see that much action on the top 10 from the team or select at that moment. So we'll be interesting to follow, guys, for sure, the NHL draft. Here, my top five players are ready to play NHL. Of course, they may be not all play, but they are on those prospects right now. My top five, they can play in NHL for upcoming year. It's Slavkowski, right? Nemec, defenseman. Marco Kasper, guy, I love this kid now more and more. And differently, David Jerechek, all my five. Then let's move on for the French players. When I've said this, of course, you know I'm French. They are born in Quebec, and they are my top five players. Nathan Gaucher, Tristan Luno, David Goyet are three players. I believe they can be picked top 32. A little bit difficult for Goyet. Luno will be bottom line. Gaucher, I believe, is going to be out 23rd to 27. Now, Maverick Lamoureux, defenseman, a big 6-7. Play for Drummondville. Can he get out early second round? That's something we're looking for. Same situation with Noah Wyron, where his late second round pick or the beginning of the third round, another great defenseman, 6'3". Finally, for this show today, guys, the NHL news today, the San Jose Sharks are going to announce this afternoon Mike Greer is going to become the general manager for them. He's become also the first black man to be managed in NHL. Remember, he played for the San Jose Sharks from 2006 to 2009. Here we go, guys. Episode 58 is going to be like this for the next couple of days because the NHL draft is coming July 7, 2022. Until then, remember, don't forget to click on the like, subscribe to the show, sharing this video, and below this video, tell me what you think about the episode number 58 with the hockey coach, Guru Code Frenchy. Until the next time, my friend, remember, you have greatness inside of you. Have an amazing, blessing day, everybody. <laughs>